All right. Would you like me to respond now, Tofu? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, the main 2004 PhD dissertation on what I'm about to share is by Michael Heiser. Uh, he's, he wrote his dissertation on what scholars call the Divine Council worldview in the Old Testament. Psalm 82 is the classic piece of text on on exactly this, where God stands in his divine council and he judges the other Elohim. That psalm is in response to the ancient Near Eastern polytheism of the classic deities El and Baal. Uh, Baal happens to be subordinate to El, and then you have the other gods that are so subordinate to those two figures. So you have El in slot number one, Baal in slot number two. They're not identical. El is the chief deity. Baal is the second, basically, the the right hand man, uh, like like a second lower lower deity. Uh, and then the rest are below them. The Israelites are monotheists. They can't allow a polytheistic model like that in their religion because to them Yahweh is supreme, and then every other creature, even spiritual beings like angels are just that creatures but as a quote-unquote polemic or a response to their pagan neighbors because the prophets uh, like for example Isaiah tells the Israelites that they have to be a light to the nations so in other words if they if they have these type of debates and these discussions with non-jews they have to to bridge somehow their monotheism to these pagan people of the ancient Near East. So naturally they'll come across these ideas of El and Baal. And so then in the Old Testament they take on titles of El and Baal. That's why you see El and Baal in the Old Testament. And other things like like Yahweh is the cloud rider. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a title of, of basically a special function for Baal. So they take on all these titles and say, no, Yahweh is the true cloud rider. Yahweh is the, the El of, of Zaphon and all that stuff. And then what Second Temple Jews at the time of Jesus hypothesized, uh, well before the Trinity comes on the scene, they, they hypothesize a type of binitarianism or a two-in-one rather than a three-in-one. And what that means is, is that if L is in slot number one, and Baal is in slot number two, the monotheist Jew is saying, yeah, that's, a, that's polytheism, but I'm a monotheist. So I'm going to have Yahweh in slot number one and also in slot number two. The slots that L and Baal are located in, my God, Yahweh, occupies both. But then the pagan neighbor listening to this would respond back saying ah but we have two slots but you claim you have only one god occupying both slots how is that possible and then the jew will respond yes because there's yahweh number one and yahweh number two or the first power and the second power and then this became what's called the two powers in heaven and you see this for example in daniel 7 the ancient of days is power number one, and that human-like figure that also rides the clouds that approaches the ancient days, that's power number two. So then fast forward to, say, the, um, the Sanhedrin, the trial that Jesus has. So he's before the Sanhedrin, and when they ask him specific questions like, are you the son of the Blessed One? Phrases like that is, is specific in Second Temple text to mean, basically, are you the second power? And when Jesus says, I am, in Mark 14, 62, he then juxtaposes Psalm 110 and Daniel 7 together and says, I am, and you'll see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power. That There you go, there's that phrase, power, because he's utilizing two powers language, and coming on the clouds of heaven and so on. And then the high priest is basically saying, uh, well, he's basically listening to this and going, 
he tears his robe and he goes you've heard his blasphemy what Th there's no need for any more witnesses against this man you've heard his blasphemy he's basically declared to be that second power or in other words he's claimed to be Yahweh in that slot number two category and so that's why they crucify him because that is the height of blasphemy to, to basically claim to be God in flesh so Alan Siegel in the 70s summarized all those details in his dissertation slash you know a later published book called the two powers in heaven then Michael Heiser in 2004 uh, developed this more show, uh, responding against the liberal scholarship that try to say that uh, you have an evolution of polytheism to monotheism Heiser being conservative to the Old Testament defended that there's no such thing as an evolutionary model rather the Jewish theology has always been monotheistic with this two powers binary binaryism in mind then Benjamin right, can so I just say I, I want to interrupt you right here Robert because well I'm finding mm -hmm. this re well, now I'm going of, through the scholars. I, I don't want to lie and say riveting because it's not riveting. But all I wanted to say is in conclusion, and I'm going to keep it very, very simple. So basically what you're telling me is some a bunch of uh, um, uh, Jewish scholars, okay, uh, are also, like you, not worshipping one God. I get that. That's fine. These are the people who worship the calf. These are the same people who worship the calf after Allah Azza wa Jal saved them from, from Fir'aun. They saw a miracle with their own eyes. And then they walk past some idiots who are worshipping some idol. And they say, you know, can we have one of those, please? Can we have one of those after what Allah has done for us? Okay. So actually, you're giving me this evidence, even, even if, if this is kind of for me to entertain it. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. Some Jews are worshipping more than one God. I can believe that. I can buy, I can buy that. It's fine. That's fine. So maybe you guys are not the, can, the only can I, ones, can I the, just the only conclude? who are, who are not very clever around the block. Maybe the, you have been preceded by your cousins who are, who are believing in, in more than one God and still say, like you lot, oh no, but we believe in one. There's one that's superior than another, but it's somehow, even though that one has more powers than the other one, you know, uh, we still believe in one. And we, we would like you to believe the same as us. You know, we would like you can, to believe that I, one and one is one. And the I Christians came on and added another one. And they say, we would like you to believe that one and one and one is one, not three. And the Jews, one and one is one, not two. Well, the, the, the Muslims, we, we, do, we can do simple maths. We know that if the Jews, if some of the Jews say one and one is one, we can say, no, that's two. You are worshipping two gods. So you can you can scream until you're blue in the face and say, no, it's only one. We are monolithistic. No, because you're talking about two powers here, one lesser than the other. OK, in the case of the no, Christians, no, no, no. they talk that, about that, three powers not, in the one. Two, the two powers is you know, not one oh, less than the other. OK, it doesn't matter. They are equal. So they are like equal. The like they are equal. Like... One of them has relinquished the, his, his power to another. Okay, no, because you cannot have you cannot can have I, two gods can I respond, working please? at the same on the same level. There will there will be no need. If they are identical. There will be no need for two of them. If they are and they are identical, then they will need no need to be for three of this them. Is, this is part of okay? the theological framework, and the theological framework in response to the polytheism is that, and here's the key word: the two slots are in hypostasis. They are hypostatic. No, I'm really connected. sorry, Robert. Two slots. No, 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 no. No, I'm not talking about a slot machine. And I'm not no, talking I, about I, a puzzle, can, an intact puzzle where you put pieces in to, to complete it. No, we're talking about one God, one one God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So, this is what we're so talking I'll, about. I'll conclude, I'll conclude it with this and then I'll give it to Amira. And I'll, his answer is yes, we believe in one God. Are you and Christian, have, Amira? Am I, I, I was, I'm Muslim, by the way, and what I'm- You're Muslim. Is... You're Muslim. Okay, yeah, of course you believe in one God. So well, well, I, I just, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying, that's why I'm asking you, Amira, are you saying we believe in one God? Yeah, of course we believe in one God, because we are the only, of course, the only what I was, what I was belief saying, system sister, who believes in one. Me, I, want to, I just want to say that one of my business partners of 21 years is a Jewish rabbi. And one of the one of the questions I asked him before 
they come in, his business partner, is who is your God and how many do you believe in? Because I know I only believe in one. And so he broke it down. He said, "There, I believe in one God. I'm a rabbi. I have to teach my followers. I believe in one God. So we shook hands and we went on um, to do business together. It's now 21 years. This year will be 22 years. So I, and Allah protected them in their land when we were um, coming into Islam. So I just want to say, I'm not taking up for the Jews, but I'm saying I hang out with one that only believes in one God, a rabbi, that scholar we're talking about, a rabbi, and he teaches his congregation that there is only one God. I just wanted to just say that, sister. I'm a Muslim. Jezek um, my sister. My sister. I'm, I'm really sorry. sorry. Jezek oh, Sister Amina, Sister Amina, do, do you understand that's what Robert is saying? We're not, we're not disputing that. I mean, we don't know this gentleman that your business partners with, but do you think that's what Robert is saying? Do you understand from what he just said in this, this, this long, I haven't uh, even, uh, I haven't even finished. That he gave? I haven't even had no, the opportunity to finish my point. Hold on, hold on, Robert, hold on, hold on, Robert. Hold on. No, I don't believe right. that. I don't believe what he's saying. That's why I mentioned my friend who, the sister asked for a scholar or somebody who knows what they're talking about. And I was just giving an example that yeah, no, but, um, Sister, you, um, you you do you do realize I don't, I don't know what I don't the know other you... brother was saying. That's what I want to say. Yeah, the other right. brother is saying that know, some Jews, know, some scholars Jews. say that there are he's talking about a dual, two slots, and some nonsense. You know that actually even the Jews. This is what his claim is. His claim is that the Jews too believed uh, believe that they that they say they say like the Christians. Oh, we only believe in one God, but actually they don't. They have a dual thing going on there. This is what Robert is trying to convince me. Okay, and I'm saying, okay, well, I have not really read uh, about these uh, these scholars that he claims are are Jewish uh, scholars. Okay, but if that is the case, I'm giving him that. If he if that is the case, as he's understood what these Jews say. Well, they are just as monolithic as as the Christians. So therefore, they do not believe in one God. If there are two, st two, two, two slots and, and all this nonsense, I'm sorry, Robert, it is nonsense. But I'm going to sue the stupid I just wanted to the the That was the part of the Orthodox tell, tell Judaism. Us using two instead of three. It's the same thing. They say the same. The yeah, exactly. Yes. They're in union. They, they believe in two gods they instead of three. But they don't, they don't, they don't contradict exactly. each other. It, it just sounds like Christianity, except he's just added, he's taken away one. Why yeah, are exactly, you commentating exactly. on something? You're not allowing me to respond back. Robert, I've, I've, I've only been on stage for a minute. I was in the audience. You were I've, literally talking I've been, for I've what, been, 20 minutes? I've, I've been listening behind monologue. for four hours. You're, Respectfully, respectfully, Robert. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. You can go in, in, in the chat. You're putting people to sleep, right? You, you, you're on this long monologue <laughs> trying to explain that. So out of that, four hours that this room's is, that been open, two, I've only two, spoken for the last two, twenty minutes. That is two deities, okay? But yet they're one. You sound just that's that's what the Christians tell us. It's it's three, but they're one. You're saying it's two, but it's one. So Tofu, can thing. I quote you a Jewish scholar, present day living Jewish scholar? It's only a two cent, two line quote. Benjamin Sommer. Can you, can you please? He, this is what he says. How about, how about that? Because you've been yeah, talking it's, it's literally it's just one sentence. He All goes. Right, thank, you. thank you. This is in his book Bodies of God. Benjamin Sommer. He's a rabbinic scholar. He bodies goes, of God. Well, I I don't care what he is actually, Robert. If he no, says I'll, bodies I'll, are I'll, in the plural so of God, it, it, I don't reaction, care. I don't, you can make himself. a reaction afterwards. I don't you, care what he calls the challenge himself. You he gave, is a disbeliever. The challenge he is a disbeliever. He is a disbeliever, Robert. I don't care what he calls himself. He is a disbeliever. But yes, give me this quote from his book. From the, the, the disbeliever's book. Give me this quote, so yes. He but says, he is a disbeliever. He says, no Jew sensitive to Judith. No Jew sensitive to Judaism's own classical sources can fault the theological model Christianity employs 
when it avows belief in a god who has an earthly body as well as a holy spirit manifestation well in that for, case he no, is wait, a deviant wait, here's, Jew. The, here's the crux that case, he is a for deviant that model Jew. we have seen he's a, he's a he's perfectly this, Jewish tofu one. That it's basically no different in christianity now he's saying you can't fault him that's exactly what i just said it's no different you, you're just saying two instead of three well benjamin sam is not a christian you asked for a Jewish that's, scholar that's, that's 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 fine, Robert. Okay, for every one her heretic that you can find, we can probably go mainstream and so find. So then, next time, say don't that, say, say that Jewish scholars different. reject the Christian model. Yes, next time, no, 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 Robert, no, no. Robert, I'll give you Robert. that. I'll give him that, brother Abdulaziz. I'll give him that. Next time, I will not say all Jewish rabbis are actually believers in one God. Next time, I will say they have just as many deviants as as the Christians do. Next that's, time, I will say that. Would that make you happy, Robert? That you yes, are all disbelievers. Who's now? You are a disbeliever and so are they? That's fine. It makes me happy. I don't care. It's the reality. You're the disbeliever, so easy. Fine. No problem. You're both disbelievers. I'm sorry, Robert. That's the way it is. Anybody who believes in more than one God, okay, and I don't tell me I, you don't believe in more than one God. You believe in the Father, the Son, and the, the Holy Spirit. That's it. You believe also, in the, I, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I overheard That's Amira it. say you that. Are, you, you do I not believe in one God. Robert, you are a disbeliever. I'm sorry, I break it to you. All right, and that's, and the, that's the, your the Jewish opinion. rabbi that you brought who believes Amira, in two, uh, you mentioned to me that you're a mathematical he, major. He's a disbeliever, Robert. So you can talk, you can talk over my voice, but you are both disbelievers, both sets of disbelievers. And to me, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference whether you believe in I, I have two a gods, three for gods, three thousand gods. You are all disbelievers. The only believers are those who believe in one God and believe that his last prophet is Muhammad alayhi Anybody who does not believe in one God who's called Allah, who calls himself Allah, who has sent many prophets before Muhammad, peace be upon him, be, be, Muhammad being the last prophet, the seal of prophethood, dies upon that belief, he will die upon disbelief. That's it. Robert, it doesn't matter whether he calls himself a Jew or a Christian or a Hare Krishna or a, or a Hindu or a Buddhist or an atheist. Anybody who, who does not believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, that all the prophets that he sent and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his last prophet, is dying upon disbelief. Full stop. Uh, we can maybe talk about something else, Robert, maybe what you're going to have for dinner. But as to your theology, as to your belief system, <laughs> you are a disbeliever. Amira, you said that you're a math major, is that right? Yes, I was. Okay, are you familiar with the Banach Tarski paradox? Yes. Can you elaborate a little bit more? No. I'm in the grocery store. <laughs> if, if when the sister asked what's for dinner, I was that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Uh, around the dinner but yes I was a math physics major got a huge um, scholarship because of my um, knowledge of it but right now I, I can't go into it yeah but if you just quickly like can you give a quick analogy of what the Benatoski paradox is I tell you what you tell us and then I'll say if you're right or wrong Basically, one plus one Robert, equals one. Robert, please just make it short. Please, we don't need. I, I gave, I gave it. I just gave it. One plus one equals one. What? According, according to who? According to the banach tarski paradox. No. If you, um, if you, have you ever looked into subsi normal groups in, that, in Robert, higher math? We should what? What I can say is in my studies, if I see something that is not in alignment with the truth, I tend to shy away from it. And then I would raise my hand and ask the teacher to explain it. And if the, he or she could not explain it, I could not agree with it. And I didn't care about my grade. If so I what was your specialization again? Then? I had to agree that their answer was right when I know that it's not right. Well, my specialization, I'm doing black hole research in the square kilometer array in Australia. So I'm an astrophysicist. And that's not how you do a okay. thesis You're in, Australia. in science. Your product is in Australia. That's where my product is from. So now I'm listening. 
but I want to just hear what you're saying. Right. So the, the reason why I raised that question is because when you said you're a math major, I'm expecting you to know what the Banach-Tarski paradox is, because that's like a freshman topic in pure mathematics and abstract mathematics. Robert, can you please just tie this in to the point you're trying to make? You're obviously trying to prove so something the, that no so the one point, on the stage believes. Can you just get to the point? Please, because, uh, I'm begging you. Okay, all right. Exactly. So earlier, when... I forget his name now, the, the other Christian guy that was on. Amira mentioned, in a tongue-in-cheek sense, that uh, you believe that 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1. And then she said... I didn't say that. I did well, not. I did not say that. No. Oh, well, yeah. how how do I know and that I you're? Well, how do I know that you're a math major that. unless you mentioned it? Because you said you're a math major. I did not say one plus one plus one is one. I know I didn't say that. No, 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 no. I didn't say that you believe that. I'm over here in the grocery store. Someone I'm said. Let me go on mute and and um and just. Uh, you mentioned that you're a math major. You mentioned that you're a math major and that one plus one does not equal one. I'm not going to act like a fool trying to refute you. I promise you that. So I'm going to go on mute. You can you can fool everybody else, but you're not fooling me. I'm dropping the mic right now. Yeah, so the reason why I know sh she said that she's a math major is because she reacted saying, how can 1 plus 1 equal 1? And so this is why, after two or three hours later, finally I'm able to come on stage and ask you this question. If you're familiar with the Banach-Tarski paradox, the reason why it's a paradox is because in abstract sub -C normal group math, you can, on paper, prove that 1 plus 1 equals 1. And so therefore, the irony is that if within the creation you have this very interesting paradox, then what more God who transcends the creation? That's, the, that's my polemic as a Christian. Okay, well, so Robert, that, you can that, use your own understanding or whatever this person is who came up with this theory or whatever can write stuff out, you know, at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, I don't know about you, but every Muslim up here, right? We believe that the Quran is the literal speech of God. All right. It, it is uh, uh, what we are to follow. Okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clear. Kuhu Allahu Ahad. There is no room for no duality, trinity, uh, two two persons co-equal co-eternal, three persons co-equal co-eternal. There's no room for any of that. So you can come with all your little human uh, professors and astrophysicists and whoever and the mathematicians and whoever and come up whatever you want to, right? We believe what the Creator says, not what you say, not what some other astrophysicist or mathematician says, especially when it comes about the Creator. The creator can, describes himself, not you. Just out of not interest, you some mathematician Abdul. or whatever, uh, uh, trying to justify or see. See, this is why you know it. It could be a trinity or a duality or whatever you just described. All right. We, listen. At the end of the day, like my sister said, right? You can come up here, and I, I admit, somebody said this in the in the chat. You are a very respectful person. You're not getting angry. You you know you're very calm. You know appreciate that. But whatever argument you bring. Whatever proofs you bring, you're not going to change a Muslim's mind up here. We consider you and the way that you just explain your belief to be polytheism. The sister already just explained to you that if you, now you personally, do not accept Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, as the last messenger, the last prophet sent by God and follow the Quran, right? You don't do that and you die upon that. Then accept your fate you know, which is going to be hellfire. Okay. You can bring whatever you want. We don't care is the bottom line. We don't care. We're going to follow what God says, not what you can make all the beautiful speech and beautiful arguments and then talk over our heads. A lot of this stuff I, I've never heard so, of it before. So just curiously on that point, just, I don't care. Just on that point, we don't care, uh, do you believe because you we don't fear care. hell? What? 
just just a very brief answer on that final point you made like do you believe in Allah and accept the Quran and so on because you fear hell you can ask us that question but let me ask you a question when okay let's first let's let's be let's agree on something first on, on some principles right do you agree that God sends prophets and messengers to people in order to inform them and teach them about who he is and what how they should worship him and give them their laws and so forth do you believe in that sure okay very good do you believe that people have the option to believe or disbelieve in those prophets and and still go to paradise for example so if someone decides to disbelieve in that prophet of course that's his decision right but does that person still as he still termed a believer and does he still go to paradise uh the whole notion of paradise and hell is a uh, is a very um it's it's rarely spoken of in the old testament it's it it is there the concept is there but it's never it's not the it's not the final charge or the final like line of the prophet's warning rather it's about the the present circumstances of what can transpire okay, okay no problem no problem let's scratch the heaven and hell part is that person still termed a believer if he does not believe in the messenger that's sent to him uh it doesn't necessarily have to connect to the messenger so for example i can think of naaman in second kings 5 who was not a jew rather he helped his king bow to a pagan a, a false god he needed healing so he goes to elisha and elisha heals him this so then naaman a gentile understands that the true god is yahweh and he does a most unusual thing he asks elijah for dirt in that region to to take back with him as a symbol for the healing in other words the cosmic geography of that location is a way for him to know the true Robert, god versus the false god what are you talking about was he a, was he a believer or disbeliever he believed in yahweh and that that was sufficient so you said he didn't believe in the messenger who was sent to him. No, that that whole concept of believing in the messenger is not that th that is never discussed, and that's not the context. So you, it's you all it's it wasn't it's, it's rather it's rather he's told by his friends, look, there's a certain prophet, in this case Elisha, who might be able to heal you because there's many prophets in the region of of various deities, and if that prophet is linked to the to the deity that can heal him then that deity has to be the true deity and sure enough he believes that Yahweh now is the true God and so he goes away okay, still without okay. any keep Bible it, still please, believing please in the true it God concise. Robert 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 please keep it concise okay so he believed in the messenger okay he, let's make he it, doesn't let's believe make, in the messenger so he thought that was a false messenger who sent him okay, no let, he, let, no let, it's, let, he's not even second, thinking that he's not making the connection that it's a false messenger either Oh, you only have two choices, though. Either you believe he's he, a messenger, or you don't. The messenger is speaking on behalf of the true God. Thereby, the messenger is trustworthy. It's not. Robert, you're, it's not you're that he's waffling, believing Robert, in the messenger for salvation. Yeah, but that's semantics, though. That's semantics. Yeah, I'm saying, Robert, for someone to be an astrophysicist, stop doing semantics. You know what the brother's trying to ask you. You're basically saying the same thing, man. So stop pretending like this person didn't believe that this was a messenger sent by God. Like, I mean, wh why are you making this difficult? I mean, based because, based he, on he this specifically. Okay, based... Robert, Robert, one second, one second. Let's make it even more clear. Let's go, let's, let's go to the story of Noah, right? The people who believe that Noah was a messenger, um, they they got saved in the ark, right? The people who believed that Noah was a messenger. Yeah, they were believers. That right? again, that phrase is non-existent. No one thought of Noah that way. No problem, no problem. Why did the people get drowned then? Let's just tell us the reason why they got drowned. Because it was a natural disaster in the Persian Gulf. Oh, okay. It had nothing to do with Noah, as a matter of fact. It had nothing to do with Noah then. No. Noah didn't hmm. cause the flood. 
No, I didn't say he caused it, but I'm saying the people who got who got drowned in the flood. It had nothing to do with their belief or disbelief with Noah. That had, no, that it had, had nothing to do with, with that, no. Really? Yeah. Okay, what, so... What Bible does he read? Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, if if it had... If they had to do with Noah, then say if they did choose to believe in Noah, how would they fit on the ark? They would have fit on the ark because they would have... if they believe, Robert, they, they it would have been a they, flood in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he could have made an ark. So if they believers. believe God what, would have prevented second. the flood? No, 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 no. One second, one second, one second. Okay. We as Muslims believe that the people who got drowned in the flood were drowned because they disbelieved in Noah being a messenger sent to them. Okay, what now, if they believed? Well, how would they have been saved? No, one second, one second, one second. You're, you're saying that that had nothing to do with it. I mean, you're saying that they just drowned. Allah just caused the, 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 the earth to flood only because... Was it a global flood or was, a local flood? What, 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 don't, don't, don't ask specifics. That's not the point here. The point is... No, it, are you that saying, is important. That, that's part of the no, accuracy no, no, of the story. It's, it's not do you believe in a global flood or a local flood? What? You're trying to run now. I can't believe this. I'm, not, second, I'm not running. I'm being specific. Whether it was global or local, are you saying it was just a coincidence, just a natural if it's global, it do... If it's global, then everyone save Noah and the people on board are saved. Right. Okay. Why was, why was Noah If it's saved? local, if it was, then there are one survivors. Second, one second. One second. If it was just a natural disaster, it had nothing to do with the way the people were acting or believing. Why did Noah get saved in the first? Why did, why was there an ark in the first place? Because the story of the flood is a recounting of it's known as a decreation, and it's what? a polemic against the other ancient Near Eastern creation myths that also speak about a flood of Utnapishtim and basically the the oh, Noah man. of the Gilgamesh Robert, epic. Robert, Robert, people are losing. And respect to you. Wait, one, allow me to respond. You know, uh, listen, so Robert, the I'm, flood Robert, Robert, happens Robert. to be the I'm Persian Gulf. From, one second. I'm asking from a perspective, perspective of a Christian who believes in the Bible. I'm, I'm giving you a response. And give us a historical. I'm giving you, know, you try to a response. Somehow tie it into other historical events that happened before. I'm asking you based on the story in the Bible. You say you believe in the Bible, right? You believe it's God's words. Why was there an ark built in the first place? Because the culture at the time. So. In present day, uh, say the Marsh Arabs of the present day, they br they build reed housing and they bring on board farm animals and so on. That was the norm of the humans that migrated out of North Africa during the Pleistocene era. And on the onset of the Holocene period, about 12,000 years ago, I think he's trolling. You have... <laughs> I'm... Please... We don't want to hear your history lesson. What does the Bible say about it? I think he's just I'm, trolling. I'm, I think he's just trolling. Cor I'm, corresponding this guy's a troller. A, I'm corresponding You're it trolling. to actual scientific about? history. We don't want to hear about scientific history. We want to hear. We believe the science in God. is okay. that it's local. I can showcase the anthropological data to then understand more clearly what's going on in the biblical text. No, no. You, you know, know that the Bible doesn't line up with history. So right. you're saying Christians are supposed to leverage. You you're saying Christians are supposed to leverage historical texts to somehow come up with their beliefs. Don't you do the same with the Quran? No, we don't. The Quran is sufficient. We don't need any historical text to somehow explain or back up the Quran. We have the Quran. That's why Allah gave it to us as a as a book of guidance. So you're saying, in order for a Christian to understand his religion, he must know history. Yes, that's that's why I believe in the Bible. So you're saying but if, if you're saying Bible, because this is this is interesting because yesterday I was in this dialogue with a Muslim on Dhul Qanain and the two horned one. Yeah, the the the, the usual uh, Orientalist claptrap. Thank you, thank you. And so Robert, so according to the Bible, I find it the, curious the, that it matches is, Alexander on, the Great. Robert, according to the Bible, the Earth is six thousand years old. You believe that? That that argument has been utterly refuted several times on this app. Robert, do you believe that? Do you believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old like the Bible says? No, the Earth is 4.5662 billion years old. So why does the Bible say 6,000? Does the Where does the Bible say it's 6,000? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, this guy's trolling, uh, guys. Seriously, he, quote me trolling. a verse that says he's, the Bible is 6,000 years old. Dude, all you got to do is look at, 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 at from the time of Adam and add up all the genealogies. That's all you got to do. 
the so genealogies are uh, rough, the, it's roughly six thousand. It's roughly those 6, genealogies don't add up and to I know six thousand. This argument before Robert, so don't don't act. Ignorant. Those genealogies don't okay. add up to so six thousand. So are you 000. saying that the Bible says that the, the Earth is four point five billion? Well, they years don't old? add up to four point five billion years either. The genealogies, saying, first and Robert, foremost, does, does the Bible allow me to respond. Billion? Allow me no, to respond. You ask me, does it say that? You I'm are asking me the age, and I'm billion? responding. Guys, listen, um, I, I, I just, I don't want to do this because I, I just became a mod. I think he's trolling. Maybe it's a Christian or someone down in the audience that, that actually wants to engage. He's mixing in history and astrophysicists and whatever else. I, I, I don't know what he is. Christian, Jew. Atheist, I, I have no clue. It looks like he's a mismatch of everything. So my, my suggestion would be... So, Liam, on. then... I'm, I'm done. Okay, Liam, you said the Alexander the Great has been debunked. Can you yeah. please explain why? I, I, I'm not going to entertain you, to be honest, because you're trying to deflect from the fact that you believe something which the Bible clearly refutes. You say that the world is more than 6,000 years old. So let's deal with that. Before okay, let's... All right, fine. Answer. Let's deal with that. Where does the Bible say it's 6,000? Abdulaziz gave you the argument. I'm not going to repeat myself. Uh, you want to... You want to stick to the topic and then suddenly you're deflecting again? No, no. How am I deflecting? Look, you're trying I to asked you, where does you're the Bible to be say it's 6,000? Look, you're trying to be smarter than you are. And to be honest, I don't think we need to entertain this. But for the sake of argument, if I was to say that your interpretation is correct that the world is 4.5 billion years old how does that add up with uh, you know the biblical narrative okay can i explain yes all right the genesis 5 genealogy is parallel to what's called the sumerian king list because in the sumerian king list you also have 10 names just like you have 10 names from adam to noah and in the sumerian king list the first name is adapa and adapa corresponds to adam in, in Genesis 5. And sure enough, by the time you reach Enoch, which is the seventh character in the, in the list, there is the equivalent of Enoch in that list. And then finally, the tenth name, which is Noah, matches Utnapishtim, who happens to be the Utnapishtim of the flood. So, when you then correspond the the ages given, well, all the ages in Genesis 5 are not base 10 numbers. They're base 60 numbers, or what's called a sexagesimal number system so we still use it today like 60 seconds in one minute 60 minutes in one hour there therefore you can't then add up those dates like how you'd add up actual years and say that it's a certain age but if you were to add them up literally it doesn't add up to 6000 it actually adds up to 12600 that's the actual figure that it comes down to. The 6,000 figure comes from Bishop Usher, who misaligned a lot of, you know, like he, he, he got a lot of things wrong in genealogies and so on, even misunderstanding symbolic numbers like the number 40, which just communicates a certain generation. Okay, cool. So if you uh, multiply 12,600 years, those 10 genealogies you get 4.5 billion years is that is that your your argument basically N no no so from adam to moses uh and jewish scholars will point this out from adam to moses if you were to add it up literally you know pretending that it's base 10 then it comes to 12600 and this is why you have for example in the book of daniel if you have 12,600 by 10, you get 1260, and hence this is why you get the 1260 figure in those eschatological texts. But it's only speaking with from the time of Adam's creation to Moses. So therefore, if the days of creation are epochs in time, and Yom can be translated as an epoch or an aeon, in, for example, the Septuagint says an aeon, therefore, Prior to Adam, you have six aeons of time that, that are well before Adam's creation, which opens the door to an indefinite time period that now science can answer as being four billion right, years. What, what's, what's your proof? Science what's your proof answer? Okay, thank you very much. Thank, well, one, one, second, one, second, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. So that's beautiful, that's beautiful. He ended his long-winded pseudo-intellectual answer with which science can answer. So thank you very much. That's, that's all I wanted. Thank you. 
there's nothing wrong with that answer. Science is a no, valuable tool that we can utilize. No, I'm not saying there's wrong with it. I'm not saying there's something wrong with it. What I'm saying is you're not basing it on the Bible. That's all I'm saying. I just gave you, I just said it opens the door to give the accurate number because yeah, then if it's yeah, indefinite, if it's indefinite, you don't know how old it is. I, Thereby, I you can't no, say that fine. it's young I'm or that's old. Fine. Well, no, no, your evidence. Abdelaziz, uh, that's fine. Uh, I, I, I like I'll the fact uh, it's I'll indefinite concede. because you know, Allah is indefinite. We can't no, even no, prove. I'm, I'm happy. Sister, I'm happy with his answer. He's literally conceded that you know the, the Bible doesn't say that the world is 4.5 billion years old. So Neither does so it say it's 6,000. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> So the claim that, that it's 6,000 is already God. muted now, and I appreciate that you acknowledge that and concede it. Robert, you yeah, gave yeah, good I'll proof, that. and other people okay. give proof from the Bible that it's 6,000. Which so, people? Whatever. So just, you know, you, 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 all, all you've been doing is, is, is get, finding someone who kind of supports your belief, most of the time in a minority. You give us this one no, rabbi I, I like it, actually. That, that, that goes against the majority you know, and then we're supposed to take that. We're supposed to take that the 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 the, the exception, but not the rule. I'm actually okay. quoting the majority if, 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 on my if, behalf. If you, the minority you, are the ones that say it's six thousand. If you want to follow that, that's for you. Even Chat GPT says it, it says six thousand years old. So I'm not sure where it's getting that. Maybe a lot of Google um, searches. But what makes you a Robert like a scholar at this? Did you write a paper or something? He's an astrophysicist, brother. But what <laughs> I what, but what I want to know what I want to know is Robert is is where does it say in the Bible that one day is not twenty four hours or one hour is not sixty minutes? What 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 where do you so are you telling me from the time of Adam to the time of Moses time was calculated differently? A day wasn't twenty four hours. It was maybe you know what you there know, would uh, a, a day was what you know. A thousand hours? I mean, what? What, what? So what changed? When did it change? Well, why, why, why do that, we count stuff like that today? No, now? but that, that, so that, that when, is a, when did this change happen? Yeah, that that's when a good question. No, that's a good question. The for example, the Egyptians had a ten-day calendar, and the six-day calendar or the seven-day calendar started to come into into no into motion. The luni solar calendar, uh, say around two thousand BC, somewhere around there. Because it became very convenient to align it, was it with. 4, it was 4,000 BC. So again, you're appealing to history and not to your no, scripture. Not, not 4,000 BC. According to interpretation, it says 4,000 BC. That's just the majority of the scholars. I guess you're, you're an astrophysicist. So. Uh, okay. The, Go, the, um, the Goblek Tepe. Where do you position that? What date? So, are you suggesting that they held to a 365 day calendar? GPT. What did you say? I'm, ty I'm typing a chat GPT. Can you spell it for me? What you just said, that word? According, because this is what chat GPT is saying. So, I'm just using research uh, information. I I'm not a scholar. I'm just trying to. Fit. You're saying four thousand or six thousand, and then this is saying four thousand. So, and then it what, says it's 4, using genealogy. What is what is the? It's... Tell me. No, explain to me what what is that so-called scholar saying? Four thousand okay, BC according about to Genesis, what? Okay, listen. The belief that the Earth is around six thousand years old is based on literal interpretation of the Bible, uh, specifically genealogies listed in Genesis. And then genealogy is listed in New Testament. So according to this interpretation, the Earth was Earth was created around 4,000 BC, and the genealogies in the Bible are used to calculate the number of years between the creation and the present day. So, but it also says scientific evidence suggests that the Earth is Earth is much older than 6,000 years. So, yeah. Do you want me to write something else? Another question you have? Because it seems like you're trying to learn. And where to to Where test. are you reading this from? I said chat GPT. What the it's heck is chat GPT? What the heck is Google? Go look it up. I mean, am I, am I here do you to have a Do you have a Brill paper that you can cite? Listen, I'm not a scholar. I'm not here to like win over you. I'm just trying to see if you make any sense or if you're against the majority. So I already explained. So, I don't know if you were here when I explained that. But if you I think the up, burden of proof is on you. But I, like, I'll, you need to tell uh, me I'll explain. I'll explain. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. 
all of so ancient Near Eastern scholars got clay from Earth and made pattern. That was a long time ago. Let's go from. So, from Adam all the way to Moses, and I can give you the paper for this. Um, the latest in ancient Near Eastern scholarship shows that when you take into account the Sumerian king list and how all the kings there, which are, by the way, in the tens of thousands of years each, which obviously is impossible for, for the human lifespan, are actually in base 60 sexagesimal number system. It correlates very well with the base 60 numbers in Genesis 5. And if you were to hypothetically, if you were to are you treat saying it, your are you saying your Bible is wrong? I'm sorry, Robert, because I'm reading. No, Jeff I'm not. Speaking. I'm not saying that. There's a lot that. of refutation amongst the six thousand year old claim. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that the Genesis five genealogy is a polemic against the Sumerian king list. If you were to take the numbers in Genesis five as base ten, as a base ten number system, which means, for example, if it says. Adam lived 930 years, that you take that literally as 930 years. If you add it all up, all the way to Moses, the age given is 12,600 years, not 6,000 years. Okay, still way off. From and then okay. 12,600 anyway, yeah. matches with the eschatological numbers in Daniel. So in other words, you divide that number by 10, and you get 1260 or the 42 months in Revelation 11, and so on and so on. So you use Daniel as your scientific criteria? No, the number that appears later on in apocalyptic literature like Daniel and Revelation. So those numbers utilized in an eschatological uh, schema or a cipher uh, make sense in that regard. But the numbers in its original context are base 60. Thereby you can't suggest that based on the genealogy that oh. The so earth is 12,000 years old. This hidden knowledge, this, this only understanding for a select few that you got to divide this number and this number really means this and it has an extra talk, little, uh, you know, it has a secret meaning and all. And then this is how you arrive at this 12,000, which is still wrong anyway, because you just said that the, that the earth is, is 4.5 or whatever billion years old. So it's still wrong anyway. No, I d but I'm not saying that we should take it as base 10. I already clarified theoretically if you were to take it as base 10. I'm not saying you, you do take it as base 10. It's base 60. Thereby, if it's base 60, you can't just add them up. We use base 10 numeric systems today to make Robert, okay, measurements. Okay, we get that. So if we do what you said and whatever. Use base 10, base 60, whatever. The number's still wrong. That's the point. Whether you take six thousand or twelve thousand, yes. Still wrong. So okay, so right? here, right? okay, is that okay, correct? once, is that okay, correct? one no, second. No, Robert, I want you to answer that question. No, that's if not it's correct. Six thousand or twelve thousand. That is not correct, and here's why. So then you made a false statement. No, when you said you believe no, that the no, Earth is no, no. Old. You're causing the straw man here, because notice Robert, that the Genesis. You didn't say that the Earth was uh, allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. You didn't say that. The Genesis passage does not give you a total calculation. It doesn't say, okay, let's add up numbers from Adam to Noah. And by the way, what's Robert, the total now? That. Do, do, it do, doesn't Robert, do that. For someone that's so smart, that is an astrophysicist, do you understand the, the overall point? Even if we take what you say as to be absolutely correct, the way you're coming up with this number, according to what you said in the beginning, it's still wrong. Why can't you accept that? The text doesn't tell you to do that. Rather, I'm responding and saying, if you were to do that, it destroys the 6,000-year claim. That's all I'm responding to. Okay, Robert. And now, to get to the ultimate point, we're saying that if you do that and you come to this 12,000 number, it's still wrong. But you don't need to do that calculation because the text does not do that calculation. Robert. So, so okay. why do so the listen, calculation so listen, to so begin listen, with? Okay, so listen. So listen. Okay. So uh, a great question. So bottom line is this calculation you're telling us, we can just throw that out the window, right? Well, not uh, well. Not right? have, not well, only second, have I second, refuted the six thousand claim. No, 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 no. You have. But thereby I've established that it's if you were to add it, it's twelve thousand. Guess what? 
I found, uh, so I'm quoting somebody who uh, studied at Calvin College, right? And they've studied what the church fathers say about this. Uh, here's a quote, right? I found that the church fathers unequivocally believed in a young earth and a literal interpretation of Genesis 1. Only one, origin, may be believed in a different interpretation of days, but he definitely believed in a rapid creation and a young earth. So in other words, Origen is the only church father who agrees with you, perhaps, like it's not even certain that he does. So all of the church fathers disagree with you, Robert. Well, Augustine believed that the earth is at least six million years old because of he, com he com um, combined Egyptian records with the six days of creation. Still off. The, 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 the seal, the concept is thousands of years, Robert. So well, the concept is six. One second, one second, one second. The concept is six. Yeah, the concept is six. Even if you were to say six billion years, modern science would disagree with that. Yes, so how exactly. curious that the text doesn't say to add it all up. <laughs> well, I like know, I told you, mystery. all of the church fathers. So stop strawmanning the text. One second, one second. Point. All stop of the church fathers. The text. All of the church fathers. All of the church fathers, with maybe one or two exceptions, agree that it's to ta be taken literal. Quote me a church father directly that says this. Because wow. I read. The... Brother, no, I read the patristics. To take the minority. He, he I read the, the patristics. I can even show you from Philo who says not to take the days literally. Okay, which father, are you asking Robert, which church father refuted the uh, age of earth? Was that- No church father refuted it because no one made the claim of the But your Bible age. is making a claim of thousands of years, Robert, and six is what, uh, you know, he was saying so earlier, where does but... the Bible say, here's the total calculation for the Earth's age? Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead, Brother Abe, uh, Robert is just playing games, right? So, be okay. So he wants to see where the Bible says, you know, verbatim, that the Earth is 6,000 years old. Right? I mean, Robert, if you want to play this game, a lot of the claims you've made about what you believe, we can ask you for verbatim statements. You made all this stuff about the duality and two creators and they understood this way, whatever. If we would have asked you, show us in the Bible where it says exactly what you just said. You couldn't. You're deriving this from looking at other verses or what other um, church fathers or rabbis, whoever, whatever they stood when they study it. Okay. For someone that's so intelligent, right? I don't understand why you're doing this. By if, the way, if the I, Bible, in the, on, in the room on, chat, can you right click here, on Robert, that Robert, link Robert, I've just Robert, posted in the room chat? Robert, I'm on land right here, right? If click on that Bible link. It's telling you it was this many generations or this many years between this, this prophet and this prophet and this prophet, all the way till you get to Jesus. And then it's clear that Jesus existed 2,000 years ago, okay, roughly, right? Then you can come to the conclusion. You don't need the Bible to say, hey, the earth was from the time of Adam to now is 6,000 years. You can look at what the text itself says. Just because it doesn't say that doesn't mean you can't arrive at that doggone, uh, uh, um, that conclusion. So, you know, you are the one that's kind of, you know, throwing red herrings in here. Oh, it doesn't say that. Okay. It doesn't say to, to, to use this 60 or 20 or divide by 10 or whatever he's talking about. It doesn't say that verbatim either. But you came to that conclusion by, oh, if you do this, if you do that, then this is what you will come up with. But it doesn't say that verbatim. So why are you asking the same thing of us when, when, it, when it has in there clearly, right? And the brother already stated to you that many majority of church fathers believe this is the way that you do it. Why, why are you disputing that? that? That's what I don't understand. And why are you asking for something from us verbatim statement when you can't provide a verbatim statement for for literally everything you said to us on this stage for the last two hours you don't see that that's a little bit hypocritical uh can you give an example of a verbatim statement oh that i can't provide it's literally in the bible robert that's the problem you're dealing with is like you're refuting what's literally there which is what you do about every contradiction so i don't i don't blame you robert for doing what is the link that i've just put the link in the room chat can someone read the abstract? It's a brill paper that tackles his head on.
Has anyone opened it? What are we waiting for again? I put the DOI link in the room chat. If someone can click on that, it's called The Life Spans of the Patriarchs Schematic Orderings in the Chrono Genealogy. Why should we entertain you? Are you not, so, what about the firmament? What about the fir firmament and the story of Noah's flood? Are you using that as evidence for the young earth? Is that what young earth interpretations are using? And what are you using? Wait, do you believe I'm a young earth creationist? I'm a theistic evolutionist. No, but like that, they hold, they hold, you know, the fact that there's a few thousand years old, right? So, who, like, where they got their evidence from the Bible. So no, they got their evidence. no, they got their evidence from Ellen G. White of Seventh Day Adventism. <laughs> That's not what it according okay. to the Okay, let's listen, let, let's we, we've given Robert a lot of time now. Let's let's uh, okay. see